of book of revelation and uh, uh, we are sitting in the presence of god especially we have uh, dear patma and kevin their family with us uh, this evening uh, as they informed us uh, that uh, they will be joining today so uh, thank you uh, patma for joining us and uh, having this fellowship together and also let us all uh, sit in the presence of god with a prayerful attitude and we are going to listen the word of god uh, let that word be a great blessing for every one of us. And first of all, I would request uh, uh, Sister Amy George to uh, summarize the previous portions now. Then uh, we will continue the, the portions. So last week we um, covered Revelation chapter 19, verse 11 to 21. That is the glorious return of Jesus Christ. So there are a few points in that. Revelation 19, verse 11 and Revelation 6, uh, verse 2, uh, it compares the real Christ and the false Christ. In Revelation 19, Jesus is coming on the white horse. So in Revelation 6, Antichrist is counterfeiting as Jesus and coming on the white horse. Second point was the secret coming of Jesus in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16. Second coming of, a, of Christ is also called a secret coming of Christ. In second coming, there will be a shout in the heaven of archangel and voice of, there would be a voice of trumpet call. The third point was only the saints of God will be able to hear all voices. The unbelieving people will not be able to hear the trumpet call and the shout. After the rapture of the believers, they'll realize what happened. There would be seven years of great tribulation will happen after the rapture of church on the earth. The saints will be with God in heaven. The fourth point was two phases of second coming. The phase one is the secret appearance that Jesus would appear in midair. And the phase second was uh, the glorious appearance of Jesus when Jesus will come on the earth. The fifth point uh, was from uh, Zechariah chapter 14, verse 4. Six was uh, Jesus is appearing in phase one of his second coming as bridegroom and second phase of uh, him coming as judge and king. Seventh point was Jesus Christ is sitting on a white horse. It is mentioned in Revelation chapter 19 verse 11 and Zechariah 9. 9. To, um, in Jewish custom, when king wins, he would sit on the white horse to show his victory. The names of Jesus who sits on the white horse are mentioned in Revelation 19 faithful and true, a secret name in 19 verse 12, the word of God in 19 verse 13, king of Lord, king of Lord of Lords, um, chapter 19 verse 16. The characteristics of Jesus, the conquering king, that his eyes are as a flame of fire. He can see everything and he will judge every person. On his head are many crowns, which means that he is, a magni he is magnificent and rule over, rule over with sovereignty. He is clothed with robe dipped in blood, which means judgment and the conquest. And the four fourth point was a sharp sword comes from his mouth. It shows that the word is sharper than the two-edged sword. And he, is, he has a rod of iron, which shows the justice. His justice is as he rules over the earth. Sixth point was he heads the wine press that is judgment at Armageddon. And um, next in Revelation chapter 19, verse 17 to 21, there is a supper in earth, uh, which is there is a marriage supper of the Lamb. And this shows that supper of great God. In uh, Revelation chapter 19, 17 to 21, it shows the supper of great God. And who would be invited to eat this supper? That is mentioned in verse 17 that all the birds which fly in the midair would be invited and the delicious dishes in the supper are the flesh of the kings, commanders, mighty men, horses and all men both free and slaves, small and great. In verse 18. How was the supper prepared by God? His enemy's army are killed by the sword of his spirit, his, sorry, his mouth. Revelation chapter 19 verse 21. So also written is in Ezekiel uh, chapter 39, 17 to 20. It is written as same prophetically. 
Then we mentioned, uh, we spoke about the great battle of Armageddon in Revelation 19, verse 19, and 16, verse 16. Armageddon gets its name from Hebrew word, Armageddon, which is Mount Medego, the place where battle is going to happen. Um, so Revelation chapter 16, 12 to 16 mentions when angel is going to blow the sixth trumpet, that is a bowel judgment. Then Valley of Medigo is 60 miles north of Jerusalem. In this battle, Jesus will be on earth and his, he will lead the battle against the Antichrist. This place, Medigo, is the place where many battles have happened in history. Armageddon had, uh, is famous for two great victories in Israel's history. That is Barak's victory over the Canaanites in Judges 4.15 and Gideon's victory over Midianites in Judges Chapter seven, Armageddon site, site of two great tragedies, which is the death of Saul and his sons in 1 Samuel 31 verse eight, and the death of King Josiah in 2 Kings chapter 23, 29 to 30, and, and 2 Chronicles 35 verse 22. Uh, a great army that, that is following Jesus is mentioned, uh, they are the New Testament saints, saints and martyrs from Great Tribulation, Old Testament saints and angels, and the political system of the earth will make all the armies of the world to be with Antichrist. Amen. Thank you, Amy, for uh, recollecting all those points and explaining all those things, and uh, may God bless you. And uh, now we are uh, coming back to our portion so in the previous classes, we learned about the glorious return of Jesus Christ and many events which, is, uh, uh, which will take, take place uh, uh, related to the glorious return of Jesus or the second phase of the second coming of Jesus Christ. And we saw that the, the second coming of Jesus have two phases. Uh, the first one is the secret appearance in air to take his saints from the earth to heaven. And the second would be his glorious appearance to the earth with his saints okay so today uh, we are going to study uh, what will happen on the earth after the glorious appearance of jesus christ we studied already many things about the the uh, secret appearance of jesus and the glorious appearance of jesus but when you go to chapter 19 so in chapter 19 itself uh, there are many things uh, which is describing about uh, what jesus and his saints are going to do on the earth at the end of the great tribulation. So uh, the things like uh, the defeat of the armies of the kings of the earth and the, and the defeat of the beast and the defeat of the false prophets. So all these things will be happening in future. But in chapter 20, when we go to uh, chapter 20 verses one to three. Okay, so we are going to study today from chapter 20, okay? So we read that Satan will be bound for a thousand years. Satan will be bound for a thousand years. So uh, now let us, let us start with, uh, I mean, reading uh, Revelation chapter 1, verse 19. Then only we will be getting the clear idea about what, is, what are the things that we are studying and now. You know, uh, regarding uh, this point, to understand all these things, we have to go back to uh, chapter uh, Revelation chapter 1, verse 19. Yes, so you, if you're ready, you can read uh, uh, chapter 1, verse 19. Now. Write, therefore, the things that you have seen, those that, are, those that are and those that are to take place after this. Okay, so in, in chapter 1, verse 19, Jesus told to John, Apostle John, that write the things which you have seen or in your vision. Okay, secondly, the things which are now happening, the things which are now happening. And the third thing is the things which will take place after these things. That means here we see three sections of the total prophecies of the book of Revelation. We know that uh, the book of Revelation is always I mean, uh, bringing a real idea about the prophecies uh, which is going to happen uh, in future, in future. So especially, uh, we understand that mainly according to this verse, chapter 1, verse 19, there are three sections of uh, total prophecies of the book of Revelation. The first thing is, the first section is, the things which you have seen 
in, vis in, in your vision. And the second one is the things which are now happening and the things which we will happen in future. So the first thing is that, that you can see that uh, from uh, maybe uh, from chapter one to uh, of, uh, chapter one to three, there are messages for the seven uh, churches. Okay, so that is the first thing. And the second thing is the things that which is happening now. And the third section is talking about the things which is going to happen after the second coming of Jesus Christ, like rapture, second coming of Jesus Christ and uh, the, the great tribulation, millennial kingdom, new heaven and new earth and eternity, all those things. So we are studying now from the third section, which starts from chapter four to chapter 22. So, so in order to, I mean, study something about the future events, we will have to go through chapters four through 22. And this section is known as the eschatological studies. Eschatological studies. You can see that uh, heading maybe in the in the first page of your notebook uh, uh, that it is written in your notebook is the, the first page of the notebook that book of revelation and the eschatological studies okay so when i'm sending the words of messages to you you can see that also everywhere every every messages you can see that the book of revelation and the eschatological studies so eschatological studies means the study of the last events or the future events just like the return of Jesus Christ, the great tribulation, uh, the millennial kingdom, the final judgment and the eternal punishment, the heavens, the new heavens and the new earth and at last the eternity. So we already completed the study of return of Jesus Christ and the great tribulation. And now we are studying about the millennial kingdom, the millennial kingdom. So the first thing that Jesus is going to do at the beginning of thousand years, uh, millennial kingdom is binding Satan and throwing him into the abyss for thousand years. Okay, so the first thing that that Jesus is going to do at the beginning of the thousand years of millennial kingdom, right after the great tribulation of se seven years of great tribulation, that is binding Satan, binding Satan that we saw that uh, in in chapter. Uh, uh, 20 itself that there is there is a, there is an angel coming down from heaven with a with a chain to bind satan so that is going to happen so the, the satan will be bound and throwing him into the abyss for thousand years okay so the first thing that you have to understand let us read that verse maybe uh chapter 20 verses 1 to 3 yeah chapter 20 verses 1 to 3 elsa you can read that portion then we will go on yeah then I saw an angel coming down from heaven. One, one second, Elsa. So when Elsa is reading that portion, I would request everyone to open your Bible and look into that uh, I mean, portion. Then only you will be understanding what I'm speaking. Okay. So listen to that verse. Then it will, it will be very easy for you to understand because already I told you that read chapter 20 uh, to make it very clear. Okay. So El Elsa, you, you can read that portion. Yeah. Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven holding in his hand the key to the bottomless pit and the great chain. And he seized the dragon, that ancient serpent, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years, and threw him into the pit, and shut it and sealed it over him, so that he might not deceive the nations any longer, until the thousand years were ended. After that, he must be released for a little while. Okay, so in this portion, maybe in uh, uh, chapter 20, verses 1 to 3, we read there, Apostle John saw an angel coming down from heaven, holding a key of the abyss and a great chain in his hand. Okay, And he is binding the Satan, who also is known as the dragon and the serpent of the old and the devil for thousand years. Now, you know that the dragon, uh, serpent of the old or devil, or uh, you can say as uh, the, 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 the false prophet, okay? So all these, these individuals are called as a satanic trinity. So our, uh, I mean, God also has this, I mean, a trinity that is God, the Father, Son, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So just like that, Satan also has a trinity. So he's uh, uh, doing that imitation and having that trinity. So what is going to happen? The angel, which is coming down from heaven, after the great tribulation period, you know, that, that angel is coming with a 
with a with a uh, with a chain and uh, the angel is will be binding the satan who also is known as the dragon or the serpent or the old devil or something and that will happen for thousand years okay so uh, about the about the place of obvious so it is uh, mentioned there the obvious so about the place of obvious we already uh, learned many things uh, while i was explaining about the uh, different departments of hell you may be remembering that portion you know different uh, different departments of hell in the in the initial uh, classes of the book of revelation so i am not talking anything about that word obvious now because already we discussed any, many things about that so from here we understand satan is not cast into the into the obvious permanently satan is not cast into the obvious permanently because god still has one more task for him to perform after the millennial kingdom after the millennial rule or reign okay so god has something to do with satan and satan will be released from the abyss once after the thousand years of millennial kingdom so we can say that satan now uh, at the beginning of the millennial kingdom is not permanently cast into the abyss because god still has one more task for him to perform uh, uh, among the people those who are dwelling in this world so we will we will study more things about the millennial reign now yeah the millennial reign uh, reign is from revelation chapter 20 verses 4 to 6 okay in the beginning verses we we read about uh, men how uh, the angel is uh, uh, binding satan and putting in the abyss but now we are going to study about what is the millennial reign from revelation chapter 20 verses 4 to 6 revelation chapter 20 verses 4 to 6 okay elsa you can read that portion now that uh, during that time the others can just i uh, mean uh, uh, take down those notes also yeah then i saw thrones and seated on them were to those to whom the authority to judge was committed Also I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for the testimony of Jesus and for the word of God and those who had not worshiped the beast or its image and had not received its mark on their foreheads or their hands they came to life and reigned with Christ for a thousand years the rest of the dead did not come to life until a thousand years were ended this is the first resurrection blessed and holy is the one who shares in the first resurrection over such the second death has no power but they will but they but they will be priests of god in christ and they will reign with him for a thousand years amen okay so so in chapter 20 itself in chapter 20 itself there are six times mentioned about the millennial reign of jesus christ six times it is mentioned about the millennial reign of jesus christ in chapter 20 itself that means chapter 20 verse 2 chapter 20 verse 3 chapter 20 verse 4 5 6 and 7 so in these verses you can see six times mentioned about millennial reign so we will understand that the millennial kingdom or millennial reign of jesus christ or thousand years of reign of jesus christ will be a great important thing in the life of uh, the, the the believers okay so uh, when we study start to study about the the millennial kingdom or millennial uh uh reign of jesus christ we have to know that mainly there are three views about the millennial kingdom okay there are three views about the millennial kingdom or millennial reign the first one the first view is a millennial view a millennial view so let us see what is the what is what is the what is the view and what is the belief of those people a millennial uh, uh view says that Uh, 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 as as many of the prophetical events are symbolic in the book of the revelation okay they say is that many of the prophetical events you know there are different 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 uh, uh, prophetical events are mentioned in the book of revelation and those events are very symbolic in the book of revelation and the concept of thousand year kingdom also is symbolic they say is that thousand year of kingdom is also symbolic and it's not a, it's not going to happen literally and they believe that already jesus established his kingdom in every one of our lives and we are in the kingdom of god already they believe that we are in the kingdom of god already so no need to wait for a millennial kingdom 
No need to wait for a millennial kingdom. And also they believe that uh, right after the second coming of uh, uh, Jesus, the final judgment will happen. And then we all will enter into the intern eternity. And they make many arguments based on that concept. Okay, So they believe that after the, uh, the, the, the second coming of Jesus Christ, there will be a final judgment. And uh, uh, then after that, we will enter into the eternity. So that's the that's the end of the end of the uh, history, the future history of the book of Revelation. So that is the concept of those people. But the second view says that that is the post millennial view. The post millennial view believes that this view saying that the millennial reign is happening at present. That means this is the time that the the, the millennial kingdom is happening. That means they don't believe that the millennial kingdom is, uh, the, the meaning of the millennial kingdom is thousand year. They believe that that may be a long time of period. Maybe you can call it as an eternity. You know, uh, now the, the, the millennial kingdom is happening and uh, uh, the millennial kingdom and dispensation of the church or uh, what is the dispensation of grace are same. Okay, dispensation of church or dispensation of grace and the millennial kingdom, they are same. And also they believe that there, uh, uh, that, uh, I mean, this present age, uh, Jesus will come and eternity will begin. Okay, so they, they believe that, okay, in this present age, Jesus will come and then eternity starts. Okay, that is the belief of uh, these pre-millennial people. Okay, but now we are coming to the third uh, third view. Okay, the third view is the main and important thing for the believers of God because we believe in that. I mean, uh, 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 that point or that view. The premillennial, the premillennial view is the important thing. You know, this is the view that the majority of the Bible scholars and uh, the the Christian churches believe according to their understanding on Bible prophecies. Okay, so. You know, the Bible school is majority of those people have a have a concept and understanding about the prophecies, the future prophecies of the uh, uh, of the of the of the book of Revelation. So majority of the people believe that I mean, premillennial uh, uh, kingdom is going to happen. That means in this view, we are also following uh, the same thing. You know, uh, uh, you know, I don't know whether whether you have any other. Uh, views on this matter other than the premillennial view because most of the people most of the bible scholars are believing in this uh, 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 millennial kingdom so um, uh, what is your belief on millennial kingdom that is what we are going to uh, to learn something okay what is our belief on millennial kingdom okay we believe that christ will come back before the millennium we believe that christ will come back or christ will return before the millennium, okay? The Christ will uh, uh, return means, you know, the not the secret uh, coming of Jesus Christ. After the secret coming of Jesus Christ, there will be seven years of great tribulation, then the glorious appearance will be happening, okay? So we believe one day the secret appearance of Jesus Christ in clouds will happen. The church as the bride of Christ shall caught up with him to heaven and for seven years, we will be with him. So during those seven years, there will be a great tribulation happening on the earth. It will be by Antichrist and his army. With the, with the, and that will happen with the permission of the Almighty God. So the first three and a half years will be a kind of peaceful reign. Antichrist will be ruling or Antichrist will be reigning over the world the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the initial stage of three years and three and a half years, it will be a kind of peaceful reign. But the last three and a half years will be a severe tribulation, will be a severe tribulation. And at the end of the great tribulation, the glorious appearance of Christ to the earth will happen. Okay, that Jesus Christ will come down from heaven with his saints and for the next 2000 years, Jesus with his saints will rule over the world. So this is our understanding about the last events or future events, especially about the millennial kingdom. Uh, that means the thousand years of millennial kingdom. Uh, let me tell you one thing. I'm not 100% sure about all these things. 
that are going to happen as we interpret or as the as the chronological order of the final chapters of the book of revelation because uh, uh, this is my understanding about the prophetical portions of the bible now that means my understanding or your understanding or the understanding of the majority of the bible scholars may go wrong okay so some there will be mistakes or there will be i mean uh, 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 mistakes will happen in interpreting the prophetical portions okay so anaram enodu parnond varillada pastor anaram padipichu vannu alla adu pole illa ipo nadakkunnu ennu parayirudhe so you know it is it is very very serious thing that you know, we have to understand very clearly and we have to think about you know how important is when we are interpreting the prophetical things or the future events you know it is not easy to interpret all those things you know one thing that uh, uh, interpreting the prophetical passages regarding the future events is often a complex thing and it's a, it's a, it's a difficult task because you know the prophets were explaining the visions that they received many years ago okay in the light of the context when they lived okay so when the prophets were living especially the old testament prophets even the new testament prophets especially apostle john he had a context okay, when he was living in this world so he was writing or he, or he was he was receiving a vision from the lord and he was writing down in a in a scroll in a, in a paper uh, like uh, you know according to the context of that person according to the context of that person okay so the the prophet for example okay when 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 john was writing the message to the church at laodicea okay to the church at laodicea when john was writing his letter he used the names of some of the objects okay he used the names of the some of the objects which was very common in his days okay in his days especially when you read revelation chapter 3 uh, verse uh, 18 maybe you can think about that 3 verse 18 now especially uh, in in that particular portion uh, uh, apostle john is advising advising the the uh, church at laodicea that uh, uh, you have to buy the gold which is refined by fire okay you have to buy the gold refined by the fire and also you have to buy the white garments okay and also another thing you have to buy the eye salve for their spiritual poverty okay for the spiritual poverty and their i mean a spiritual blindness or spiritual nakedness okay do you think that their spiritual poverty would be solved by applying some gold or do you think that uh, their blindness would be solved by wearing a white garment no it is going to happen it is not going to happen okay then why he used those subjects then why he is using those subjects there it is to make more clarity for his message it is to make more clarity for his message so think about we who are living in this 21st century may not understand the real context of those prophetical portions it is very difficult to understand in which context that uh, that that prophet was writing that vision okay it is very difficult for us to understand even we are trying to interpret and make uh, make a, make some kind of conclusion knowing that our interpretation also may go wrong regarding the eschatological events because eschatological events or the last events or the future events are very difficult to interpret okay but we are trying for that okay you know the the other day uh, while i was uh, uh, teaching in a in a malayalam bible study in boston prayer line uh, somebody asked me a question that uh, they were asking pastor uh, there are there are many prophets today okay there are many prophets today and and when why uh, god is not revealing about when this corona issues are going to stop okay this is a, this is a common question that uh, the the people are having these days no they were asking pastor there are you know that there are many prophets here there are many prophets in new testament uh, time also new testament churches also that why god is not revealing about when these corona issues are going to stop okay and also they asked another question there are many doctrinal issues and 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 differences maybe doctrinal uh, differences in each christian denominations okay but why 
no prophets are receiving a clear revelation about the fundamental doctrines of the Bible. The question is, why no prophets are receiving a clear revelation about some of the fundamental doctrines? Because each church, they are, they are having their own belief system. And, and, and the same thing, you know, about baptism. Okay, about baptism, uh, okay, uh, the, the Roman Catholic Church is believing in, in a different way and the Pentecostal churches are believing in different way. You know, there are many things which is, uh, which is believed by different denominations. So these people are asking me the question that, you know, why no prophets are getting any vision or getting any clear revelation about the fundamental doctrines of the Bible? You know, you know what, what was my answer? I replied like this, you know, there are many things which God did not want to reveal to the human being. Okay, there are many things which God do not want to reveal to the people because Bible says that the hidden things are not belongings to us, but that belongs to God, right? The hidden things or the secret things, okay, that is the worst. No, the secret things are not belongs to the, to the man, but that belongs to God, okay? And the regarding the, the, the fundamental doctrines, okay, it is already, uh, already, you know, very clearly, it is written in Bible. Uh, there is no need of special revelation. Okay, about many things about the fundamental doctrines of the uh, the Christian Church is very clearly written in the Bible. Okay, there is no need of uh, a special revelation for understanding. Okay, this is about salvation, or this is about baptism, or this is about the Holy Spirit. Everything is very clearly written in the Bible. So, only thing that we have to do is don't don't wait for a special revelation about the fundamental doctrines or these things. But you have to read that Bible and understand that and obey that. Okay? At the same time, the future events or the eschatological events which is going to happen in the future is not like that. Okay? That, that we cannot clearly say that, okay, this is the interpretation of this, I mean, this vision or this is going to happen. We cannot clearly say that, but we are assuming that that is going to happen in that way. Okay. By the way, let me inform you one thing that I am I am taking uh, a, 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 a Malayalam Bible study every Thursday, uh, 8 a.m. to 9.15 a.m. in Boston Prayer Line. Okay. So uh, some are attending from our church, but those who are uh, those, can, those who can understand Malayalam and those who are free in that time can join if you like. Okay. So it is on every Thursday uh, from 8 a.m. to 9.15 in uh, uh, Boston prayer line. So if you know Malayalam and you can also join in that and you can attend in this class. Okay, so let us come back to uh, our portion today that uh, uh, when you read uh, uh, chapter 20 of uh, book of Revelation, especially we will understand many things from the Bible about the purpose of the millennial kingdom. The purpose of the millennial kingdom, okay? There are different purposes of the millennial kingdom. So that means why God is placing that, why God is uh, establishing the thousand year of the millennial kingdom. What is the purpose behind it? <clears throat> okay, so when I say that uh, uh, about the thousand years, okay, this is going to happen that thousand years, uh, uh, we will be ruling with Jesus Christ. Um, I'm not sure that, I mean, it is going to be the thousand years or something, or uh, is there any, any other meaning or something, but I believe that uh, and we can also believe that there will be a time that we will be ruling over the world, ruling over the world with Jesus Christ, sitting on the throne and with Jesus Christ, we are going to rule over the, the nations of this world. There is a time, but I uh, it, very clearly it is read, written that uh, a thousand years, at the same time, but you know, the Bible says that okay, uh, our one day is the, a thousand years for God. Okay, so I don't know how many years are, the, if, if, if in that way, if you're thinking uh, what is going to happen in that way. Okay, so any, anything uh, uh, that we believe that we can say that there will be a kingdom of God, which will be on the earth, I mean, on the earth, uh, in which we are going to, I mean, rule over the world with Jesus Christ. Okay, let us think about what are the purposes of the millennial kingdom. The first thing is, the fulfillment of God's promises to Israel and to Christ. Okay, uh, we are not going to read those portions, but it is you know in Psalm number two, 
and also in Luke chapter 1, verses 30 to 33. Okay, so when you go through those portions, we will understand it is a fulfillment of God's promises to Israel and to Christ. God already promised that, that uh, 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 there will be a kingdom of God is coming. Okay, even Jesus, when Jesus was preaching the gospel, he uh, informed to the disciples that, okay, something is going to happen. Okay, the, the kingdom of God will come and you all will be, I mean, there, the members of that kingdom of God, and you will be rolling over the nations during the time when I'm establishing the kingdom of God. Okay, so the first thing, the first purpose is fulfilling God's promises to Israel and also to Jesus Christ. And the second purpose is to reveal the worldwide display of Christ's glory. Okay, that means let the world know, let the worldly people know, let the nations know, let, let, the, let, the, let the Jewish people know, let the Gentile people know that there is a glory in Jesus Christ. That means Jesus Christ is glorious and his appearance also was a glorious appearance. Okay, and the third purpose is to answer to the prayers of the saints. Okay, so as we are the saints of God, as we are the children of God, we are praying every day, oh Lord, thy kingdom come, right? We are praying, oh Lord, thy kingdom come. So we are waiting for the kingdom of God. And when this is happening, and this is going to be the answer for the prayer of the saints of God. And so there are mainly, I mean, uh, 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 many things are uh, written in that portion in, in chapter 20, and some other portions also will be uh, reading all those portions later. And there are many things written in this chapter also about what is going to happen during the time of the millennial kingdom. Okay, especially we already read uh, chapter 20 verses four to six, right? Okay, uh, uh, in, in Revelation chapter 20 verses two and three. Okay, that verse says that God will bind Satan and throw him into the abyss for thousand years. So that he would not deceive the nations any longer until the thousand years are completed. Okay, so why God is putting Satan in the abyss and locking down or binding Satan and throwing into the abyss for thousand years? Because the, the reason is written there. Because he would not deceive the nations any longer until thousand years are completed. You know, thus far, Satan was, I mean, spreading his gospel, spreading his, uh, um, uh, his uh, I mean, laws to everywhere. And he was trying to, I mean, uh, catch up many people. He was trying to destroy many people with the worldly system and the Babylonian system and everything. But now God's decided that I'm going to bind him and I'm going to put him in the abyss. He cannot come out from that place. But after a thousand years, he will be released for a short time. It is very clearly written in that verse. Okay, After a thousand years, no, he will be released. He will be released for a short time. He would not know what is a short time meaning. But anyway, anyway, after the thousand year uh, of millennial kingdom, the Satan will be released. You know, uh, when we read a chapter, okay, verse four onwards, no, many things are happening during those days. Many things are going to happen. First of all, the resurrection of the great tribulation martyrs will happen. Okay, the resurrection of the great tribulation martyrs. You know, there will be many people dying or becoming martyrs. Great tribulation time. I mean, uttri peri marikim, uttri peri rekta sashilaitu marikim. So those people will be resurrected. So the resurrection of the great tribulation martyrs will happen. Then Jesus will reign over the world, which doesn't have the presence of Satan. Okay, Jesus will reign over the world with his saints, which doesn't have the presence of Satan. Now, you know, this world is belonging to Satan. This world and the worldly things are belonging to Satan. But in the time of the millennial kingdom of thousand years, when Jesus is ruling, when Jesus is reigning, 
And when Jesus and his saints are going to reign over the world, then there will not be the presence of Satan because Satan will be, Satan will be bound and cast into the abyss. Okay, so this thousand years will be the years of peace. The thousand years will be the years of peace, the years of righteousness, and the blessings for the people of God. Amen. So we are waiting for that. You know, the thousand years of the kingdom of God on the earth is going to be the peaceful years and righteousness years and the blessings for the people of God. When, you know, when Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, rule over the world, Amen. And sitting on the throne, there is no doubt we, the saints of God, also will be with him to reign over the nations. Amen. So let us now study about who all will be there on the earth during the time of millennial reign. Who all will be there on the earth during the time of millennial reign? You won't be writing any 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 Bible verses for that, but let me let me just uh, I mean uh, read out those things because already it is there in the in chapter twenty. Okay, so we will just, I will just I mean uh, tell you what are the things that and uh, who all will be there on the earth during the time of the millennial reign. Okay, the first group of people are the New Testament Church or the Bride of Jesus Christ. Okay, and the Old Testament saints also will be there. The martyrs of the Great Tribulation people will be there. That means these people have received the glorious body like Jesus Christ. Okay, These people have received the glorious body like Jesus Christ. That means the New Testament church, that means the bride of Jesus Christ should be there. The Old Testament saints are there. Old Testament saints means no, the people, those who died, the Old Testament people, those who died uh, uh, before Jesus Christ, before Jesus Christ coming into this world. Okay, And the martyrs of Great Tribulation, as I told you, Many people will uh, many people will not uh, obey the commandments of Antichrist during the tribulation. Okay, so those people will be becoming the martyrs. So those people also will be there. And the next group of people are the saints who were not killed during the time of the Antichrist rule. Okay, so during the time of the Antichrist rule, there will be many people those who are not killed, even if they are not obeying. The commandment of Antichrist, they are not killed. Somehow they escaped. Okay. And there will be a group of people who are protected by God. Okay. Especially in uh, in uh, in in book, same book of Revelation, we read that there will be a, a, a hundred and forty-four thousand people, okay, especially separated from or chosen from the the Jewish religion. Okay, so from the people of Israel. So those people will be protected by God. Okay? And those people also will be there in the millennial kingdom. Okay? And the third group, the third group is going to be the followers of Satan who were living during the time of the tribulation. Okay? During the time of the tribulation, there will be many people. There will be many followers of Satan. Okay? They are living. They are living during the time of the tribulation. So this group will be joining with Satan when Satan will be released from the abyss. I mean, you know, this is going to happen. Now, after the release of Satan from abyss, you know, to make a war against Christ and as mentioned in, you know, chapter 20 verse 9, that they will be devoured by the fire which came from heaven. Okay, so after, after Satan is released from the abyss, he will come back to the earth and then again, what is going to happen? He will try the, the other people, some of the people, some of the kings and some of the other people to say that, okay, let us let us fight against Christ now. Okay, but in, in chapter 20 verse 9, it is very clearly that written that they will be devoured by the fire which came from heaven. There is no need of war there. No, automatically from the fire which is coming from, from heaven, that will destroy these people. Okay, so these are the these are the group of people who will be there on the earth during the time of millennial reign. Okay, so now we are going to study about 
when what are the special characteristics of Christ millennial reign? There are many points. You can just wrote, note it down. That's all. Okay. I'm not going to uh, explain all those points because we don't have any, enough time. Okay. So what are the special characteristics of Christ millennial reign? We are trying to understand what are the special characteristics of millennial kingdom led by Jesus Christ from various prophetical books of the Bible. Okay. Already, there are many things written about what is going to happen and what will be the characteristics of the, uh, the, the millennial kingdom and what is the speciality of the millennial kingdom and why we should wait for that. Even in the Old Testament and also in the New Testament, even Jesus, when he was giving uh, uh, the information about the kingdom of God uh, to the disciples and the people, uh, Jesus was saying, you have to wait for the kingdom of God. I'm going to establish the kingdom of God. That's the reason you know, the disciples were asking, when are you going to establish the kingdom of God? When, when are you going to establish the kingdom of God? Then Jesus said, no, no, no. It's not your time that the Father will decide the time of the kingdom of heaven that I'm going to, uh, to establish. Okay, so what is going to happen during the time of the millennial kingdom from, the, from different prophetical books of the Bible? First thing is peace will be there. That means all wars will be ceased. Okay, the battles will be ceased. So the peace will be there. I see chapter two, verse four. And joy will be there. Joy will be there. That means the king's subjects will be so happy about many things. And again, holiness will be there. That means this kingdom will be a holy kingdom. Okay, this kingdom will be a holy kingdom because the people just before the millennial kingdom, they were facing the tribulation. They were facing the torturing of Antichrist. There was no joy. There was no peace at all. And it was not a holy rule at all. But when Jesus' uh, uh, millennial kingdom rule will be a holy kingdom. Okay. And next to them is glory. Okay. This kingdom will be a glorious kingdom. Isaiah chapter 12 verses 1 and 2. The kingdom of millennial Jesus Christ. That is going to be the glorious kingdom. And justice will be there. That means justice will be there. The perfect justice will be administrated to every individual. Okay? The perfect justice will be administrated to every individual. Okay? It is which is written Isaiah chapter 9 verse 7. And again, fullness of knowledge will be there. Fullness of knowledge will be there. Isaiah chapter 11 verses 1 and 2. The fullness of knowledge will be there in the kingdom of God. Okay, And again, the next thing is the removal of the curse will be there. The removal of the curse will be there. Isaiah chapter 11, verses 6 to 9. That means all the curses will be removed from the world. The curses will be removed from the world. And again, sickness will be removed. Sickness will be removed. Sickness and death will vanish from the earth. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 17. In Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 17 says that there is no sickness. There is no sickness during the time of the millennial kingdom. There is no death at all. Okay? Uh, sickness and death will be vanished from the earth. Okay? And the next thing is complete healing will be there. Complete healing will be there. Okay? There is no sickness means uh, uh, the, there is no king, there is no uh, death or there is no uh, sickness and if anything is happening there is a few, full curing or healing will be there. I say chapter 29 verses 17 to 19 and protection will be there. Protection will be there. In Sakura chapter 9 verse 8 Sakura chapter 9 verse 8 the protection will be there. That means there will be a supernatural preservation of life during the millennium time. So you can read all those portions and understand maybe later uh, after this class, but I mean, we don't have time to read all those portions now. They're just That's why I'm just reading out. Okay, so the protection will be there. That means there will be supernatural preservation of life during the millennial kingdom. And another thing is there will be no oppression. There will be no oppression. Okay, that means there will be no social political, racial, or religious oppression in that day, okay? There will be 
no oppression okay no social no political no racial or no religious oppression will be there in the millennial kingdom and, and the next thing is there will be no immaturity there will be no immaturity that means there will be no mental uh, retardation or uh, doubtful bodies or something in Isaiah chapter 60, 65 verse 20, it says that there is no immaturity. Okay, There is no immaturity. Everything will be perfect during the time of the millennial kingdom of God. Okay, And again, in uh, Isaiah chapter 30 verse 26, it says that there will be increase of light. There will be increase of light. That means there will be an increase in solar and lunar light or system this will produce longer growing seasons. Okay? This will produce longer growing seasons. That means every time light, every time light, okay? there is no need of any other lamp and Jesus Christ will be the lamp in that day. It is very clear related to the Bible. Then Jesus Christ himself will be the light of the world in those days. Amen? So we also will be the light of the world during the time of the millennial kingdom. So increase of light will be there. And another thing which is written in Zephaniah chapter 3 verse, 3 verse 9. Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 9 says, there will be a unified language. That means all people will, will speak the same language or all people can understand the same language. That means all language barriers will be removed. All language barriers will be removed. We know that uh, when the the, the lang when the language was uh, I mean uh, 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 broken or when the language was I mean uh, uh, divided in different different languages, like you know when the people uh, were uh, uh, building the the Tower of Babel. Okay? When they were building the Tower of Babel. Yeah, God said, no, 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 this is not going to happen. So we are going to divide the languages and different people were speaking different languages. But during the time of the millennial kingdom, there will be a unified language. According to Sophonaiah chapter 3 verse 9, all language barriers will be removed. And again, the next thing is unified worship will be happening there. Unified worship. Now, now what is happening? Now everyone is worshiping different way, right? Everyone is worshiping different way. You know, every churches they have their own worship system, and uh, all the all the method or pattern of system, different 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 types of worship systems are there involved now. Okay, but all are worshiping God alone. But at the same time, same time during the time of the millennial kingdom, what is going to happen? There will be a unified worship according to Isaiah chapter forty-five, verse twenty-three, and also the fullness of the spirit will be there. The fullness of the spirit will be there. I see a chapter 44, verse 3. Okay, so that is, these are the uh, special characteristics of the, the millennial kingdom. So this is going to happen. There are many other things also in different passages, different uh, books, but we are not going to uh, write all those points, but we will conclude today's class by uh, reading some of the verses, maybe chapter 20, verses 7 and 8. Okay, now let us come back to that chapter 20, verses 7 and 8. Okay, and uh, I will have to remind you something more things from that portion, and we will conclude today's class. Okay, let us read that portion, chapter 20, verses 7 and 8. And when a thousand years are ended, Satan will be released from his prison and will come out to deceive the nations that are at the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them for battle. Their number, their number is like the, their number is like the sand of the sea. Okay, so uh, let me remind you one more interesting thing which will happen right after the thousand years of Minelia Kingdom in this verses seven and eight, okay? So Satan will be released on, on a, a kind of parole for a short period of time, okay? Uh, for, a, for, you know, Satan will be released from the abyss for, thousand, for, for, a, for, a, for a period of time, for a short time of period, after the thousand years of, uh, I mean, uh, uh, stay in abyss, okay? And that is going to be like a, like a uh, released on parole, okay? So remember, for thousand years, Satan is bound 
and locked in prison. Okay, Satan is bound and locked in prison. In prison. Okay, but after the millennial reign of Jesus Christ, Satan is released uh, from that abyss, but he doesn't have any repentance. Okay, but he is again showing his real character here also that we read there. He comes to deceive the nations again and gather them together for the war of Gog and Magog. Okay, this is the war which is also mentioned in Ezekiel chapter 38 and 39. Okay, we are not going to explain all those things about the Gog and Magog battle or something. But the, the interesting thing that we have to understand from this portion is mainly, you know, thousand years Satan was in, Satan is going to be in the abyss, locked there. Okay, but after thousand years, he will be released. You know, after thousand years of this tribulation also, he is not having any repentance. Remember that Satan is not going to have any repentance in his life. But we are the people that we have to have the repentance in our life. Okay, so even after releasing from the abyss, again, he is coming and calling all the people, all the, all the nations and saying that gather together, gather together, let us have a war in Gog and Magog against Christ and his saints. But what is going to happen? Bible very clearly says that that is going to be a defeat and that is going to be a dangerous thing for Satan. Now, another thing, even if the dwellers of the earth have experienced the peaceful and blessed rule of Jesus Christ, still many will join with Satan forever, for a while. This is interesting thing to know that, you know, for thousand years, all the people of this world, they were experiencing the blessed and peaceful rule of Jesus Christ. Okay. Still, there will be many people joining with Satan for a while. You know, even today also, many are missing their opportunities to sincerely follow Jesus Christ, but they are eagerly waiting to follow the satanic and worldly pleasures, right? No, there are many people. There are many people getting many chances in their life, many opportunities in their life to follow Jesus Christ. Sincerely, they can follow Jesus Christ. They have the word of God. They have the preachers. They have the pastors. They have the servants of God. They have many opportunities they are given. But remember one thing, you know, many people are still following the satanic and the worldly pleasures. You know, as we come to Revelation chapter 20, verse 10, let's read that verse also. Maybe verse 10, verse 10, yeah. And the devil who had deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and sulfur where the beast and the false prophet were. And they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. What is that? The devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. We know that two persons of the satanic trinity, the beast and the false prophet. They are already in the lake of fire. They are already in the lake of fire. Okay, This beast and the false prophet, they are already in the lake of fire. And now the Satan, who is the third person of the trinity, satanic trinity, trinity also will be cast into the same place forever. And that will be the end of Satan. And he will not have any chance of releasement from the lake of fire. I mean, so just I mean, remember one thing that many things are going to happen after the great tribulation period. You know, remember one thing that God is going to do his work on the earth. I mean, but what is our, I mean, uh, what is our responsibility this evening? You know, when we are studying about the, the great tribulation and when we are studying about the millennial kingdom, the thousand years of millennial kingdom, all those things that we learn about, all those things, we have to understand and God has a God has a plan. God has an eternal plan about all the believers of Jesus Christ. So this evening also, God has a special purpose and plan about the people of God, about the saints of God, that we are going to rule over the world one day. I mean, I mean, with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So we are waiting for the kingdom of God. I mean, we are not waiting for any of the kingdom of this satanic kingdom of this world. We are not, wait, not waiting for any worldly pleasures. 
We are not waiting for any of the things of this world, but we are looking above and we are waiting and we are praying, oh Lord, we need to be in the kingdom of heaven. We, we need to be in the kingdom of God. I mean, when you are going to establish the kingdom on this earth, oh Lord, the, the thousand years of peaceful and blessedful, I mean, greatness of the rule of Jesus Christ. Oh, so let us pray that, oh Lord, help us also, Lord, help us also, Lord. I mean, Lord, we need the encouragement, Lord, we need the help of God to, 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 to obey the word of God in the coming days, oh Lord. Let us all, I mean, commit ourselves with the mighty hand of God. Let's pray together. 